A big part of my career has been looking at the therapeutic value of the 12 steps because the 12 steps really have harnessed some powerful psychological forces that creates an amazing change in our life. What does that change? Well, the truth is, is that the 12 steps are engineered to help us achieve emotional sobriety, to achieve true independence of spirit, to achieve autonomy, to learn how to take care of ourselves. These are things that we don't know. Emotional sobriety really helps us learn how to have a healthy relationship, how to have union with the preservation of our integrity, how to cooperate with integrity. Most of us get lost in our relationships. Most of us do a lot of things we don't want to do. We don't really know how to show up in a good way. Emotional sobriety is about learning to have healthy relationships. We are continuing our discussion of the 12 Essential Insights for Emotional Sobriety, a book I've written a number of years ago, and we've decided that we'd walk through those things, and we are now on the chapter that says no one is coming, and yet Tom is here tonight. Tom, welcome, and welcome Thanks. back, my friend. Thanks. It is so good I, to see you uh, here. I, I appreciate it. I I am uh, every day. I'm becoming more like a normal boy. And uh, t today I'll have I'll ask the group to celebrate with me. After months, starting in early October, after months and months and months, I I got my feeding tube taken out today. So so I I no longer have a feeding tube, and that is uh that's a big step for me. So I, that's I a huge step that. for you, man. I'm so glad that yeah. that thing's out, and maybe you can get that subway sandwich you've been dying for. We, we're not, we're not quite there yet. It's like you know, I'm still my my celery glands are still on strike, and uh, and uh, nothing tastes like it's supposed to. But but I am able to to maintain my weight and get get my get my nutrition in, and and I'm and I'm feeling stronger all the time. So I, I appreciate that. And I wanted to say to you, Alan, when when which which daughter said you weren't you were no Brad Pitt? That was Danielle, my oldest daughter. Oh, oh, well, it's this. This is probably more apropos. I had a an adult client of you know this. I don't know how she was. She was probably closing closing down forty at the time. And and we were we were talking about body image and and eating disorder and we and and. And she was talking about, you know, the the crap that the magazines all put out and just the, the, all the comparisons that are set up and stuff. And one, at one point, I said to her, I said, well, you know, it's, I said, we, we talk about that and how that happens for women, but it's, it's, you don't think about it, but it does happen for men, too. I said, I learned a long time ago, I'm never going to be a Robert Redford. And she said, who? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good, man. That's that's, that's when I that's when I knew I was old. <laughs> you knew you were old, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, happy birthday to you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. It's like, um, well, I I I did an honest. I did made an honor effort at at, at uh, preparing my my remarks like like uh, you you other guys do, and I've got lots and lots of notes. I don't know how this works, so I'm so I'm, but I have I have some some things I do want to do want to talk about. One 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 I just want to start with. Um, well, let me read this. I, I have one of my nutshells I was going to start with, as a matter of fact, and this is one of my favorites. And a lot of people don't like it sometimes, but I, I like it. And it's it's it says reading and talking about philosophy, which I really think this is what we do is philosophy as much as it is psychology, reading and talking about philosophy without invested practice is an excellent way to get one's head wedged up one's own ass. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be glad to send that to anybody who needs it to be a reminder. It's, it's like without application. And that's what this, that's what everything about emotional sobriety, the practice of emotional sobriety is to me. It's, it's about, it's about, it's about daily practice. And, um, and I don't know how long it took me to, to get my head around that in my life, but you know, I, I've always understood the concept. I understood the concept of one day at a time, but only, you know, in the, the last, I was, I would say decade or so, I really get, get the idea that if, if I'm not translating what I find helpful in, in what I'm studying, what I'm getting from, from my, 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 my peers or my, 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 my uh, teachers, 
if I'm not translating that into daily practice and I, in a, in a way that I can actually articulate it and practice it, then I'm, then I'm not getting the full benefit of, of what I'm, what I'm working on. And I think this, this, this group working with, working with uh, you, Alan, and, and, and working with this group is, is, is a, one of the best, it is maybe the best example I've ever seen of, of a group who really is devoted to that idea. Let's, let's see how we put this into practice. Um, so maybe I'll start, what I'll, what I'll start with is, is I, I was rereading this chapter. I love, I love that chapter. I love Philip in your, in your chapter uh, on, uh, on No One's Coming. And, and one of the reasons for that is, I, I, of course, I identify with Philip. It's, it's like, you know, I have that, that voice in my head so long that it was always, no matter what you're doing, it's, it's not good enough. And, oh, man, you've worked on this forever and ever. And that's what I really identified with. He was talk, He talks about how he's, he put all this effort into it, all of these different places and looked for help in all these places. But and again, speaking of all or none terms, he was saying, but, but nothing's helped. You know, he's not, he's never made any progress. And of course, what, what we know, and, it's, and not just as therapists, but just as anybody listening from the outside in, when, when you hear that all or none thinking, you, you, what I say is there's a, there's a, there's a robot, there's a bot at work there. And that's, you know, some version of that should monster that I call it the should monster. People call it different things, but, but for me, it's, it's that preordained conclusion. It's, it's the, the, the idea is the, when I, when, if I put myself in Philip's place, the reason I'm coming to the conclusion that I'm a failure is because I've got a strong, re, re, deeply seated repetitious message that says I'm a failure. And, and it, it, it's not called, it's not like I look at what I'm doing and then decide that. And, and because that's what he was saying in, in your chapter, I think, is he concluded that, that, that he was a failure because of what he saw. What I what I read was, was, no, he 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 basically was following the direction of that negative, that negative pattern, that negative voice that says you need you need to find evidence that you're a failure. It's, it's backwards, and it's, and it's like, and we and, and we do that, and it's like, um, and again, the, the tip off is the all the all or none uh, for me, for me a whole lot of a lot of that, um, and then and then I want to, um, well, okay, let me let me back let me do this one first. No one's coming. This, this, I'll, I'll I'll stay on on topic. No one's coming, and and. and and, that, and Herb did a good job, of, and, and we've all done a job doing this, but Herb did it last time, I think, a lot to say, you know, just like everything else, we're contradicted in the crap out of ourselves when we're talking about this stuff. And, and of course, is someone coming? Yeah, I can tell you exa examples of people coming to my, to my help, to my rescue and coming to my, to my aid and all this other stuff. But ultimately, what no one's coming, at least for me, means is I am ultimately responsible. It's like doesn't mean it doesn't mean I can't have every single one of you helping me, you know. And and some days I may need that, but and and some days I may I may need to just hand the reins over to to Alan or Roger or her and say say can you get me through this day? It's it's like but in that in that scenario I'm still in charge. I'm the I'm the one that basically is saying I'm you're my consultant today, Alan. Can you can you can, I, I I'm going to do what you say to get me through this day. Can you are you willing to do that? And if he says yes, then then we'll go ahead and do that. That's that's not that's not Alan coming to rescue me. That's Alan coming to help me when I am taking responsibility, saying I need the help. And see, I like a lot of times we've been we've we've been taught that. Um, the the, the the rescue fantasy is that yeah that somebody's going to know if you if you love if, a lot of times if you if you love me you'll know and you'll come you'll come save me you know and it's like um that i mean it reminds me of when i was first trying to get published uh, as a young man and writing stuff is uh, you know I, I realized looking with hindsight i was just I, I just was waiting around for somebody to discover what a genius i was i was you know i, I was i mean i was i was thinking well they're gonna you know we didn't have email back in those days but, but they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna write me a letter in response to my submission and, and go oh my god we've been waiting for you forever and, and so we finally found you it's it's like and what i realized only with hindsight that i was looking at that and and that was 
I really was buying into that to that fantasy. Uh, and, and I think we do that same thing with think who's going to help us, who's going to save us. Yeah. There's another piece of this, though, too, is that I that I talk about a lot, which is not only is nobody going to come save us, nobody is making us do this. It's one of the things that, that I, I wrote a little thing a while back called Confrontation. And basically the essence of the message in that, it's just a page long, the, the, is, is, is it's not okay to choose to do something, recovery, recovery from or recovery of, whatever you're doing, whatever recovery is. It's not okay to, to choose it and then act like somebody is making you do it. And, and I and I, don't, and I, I know I'm not the only one who has a history of this. I have a long history of of choosing something i like long showing up for therapy doling out the money and then digging my heels in and resisting every damn thing that that, that therapist was going to say to me you know and and then being mad at the therapist projecting all that onto that person so i so i try to get there early with people and say you know nobody's making you do that uh, I, as a matter of fact i had a, a, a client today that that was um had had messaged me about kind of being on the edge of of some relapse stuff and and one of the things that i i wrote back to him was was that when i was especially young, especially when i was early in recovery it really helped me and i had a wonderful sponsor who would do this who would constantly or consistently remind me that nobody was nobody was stopping me from drinking that i that i always had the, that i always had the choice to drink you know, because because it's 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 so much easier if you want to be resistant and and fight things like like my deep self definitely wanted to in those days. It's like you know you have to have somebody to fight, and so so you you know so it's, people are making me do this, and it's like no, they're not, and and it really takes the wind out of the, the sails of the resistance when you realize you say well you can do that, you know, but. You, you know, you, you know, you might want to consider everything else you've learned so far along the way. And and of course, what happens with people when you do that is that they go back in. They they you know it is it's you know it's seldom that people don't do a good job at that point of just taking responsibility for themselves. But it's good. It's just a good reminder to say nobody's keeping us from that. And um, you know whatever whatever it is I'm doing, I'm doing it because I choose to do it. I hope that I hope that makes some sense. the The other thing about Philip, I want to say before I leave Philip, is that that um, I read through. See if I maybe may wrote some of the things down that he that he said. He, he you know he no payoff. He get no payoff from all the work he's done. He's still he's still and and he characterized that as still in pain uh, associated with his childhood trauma. Um. He's tried to forgive those who hurt him and have has failed to do that. He says, um, um, and uh, and he just and he said and he says the all or none thing. Help has not done any a bit made a bit of difference for him. This reminds me of a lot of the things that that that, that I get into with clients, which is where I, I, get, I think the message for all of us is that there's a lot of this stuff we have in common and there's a lot of things we can talk about in the broad strokes like we're doing when we do these presentations but it, this is a personal growth is just an extremely subjective experience i mean there no two of us are exactly the same we, they're, we're just not and it's it's like when i learn when i uh when when i you know i, I think carl jung said said that basically that that he 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 developed a new language for every client that he had and i think i think irv yalom uh, uh, he wrote your irv yalom took it a took it a step farther at one of his books and just said he he invented a new therapy for every client he had it's like i mean you want to go in as fresh as you can it's like you know i think i think i may not be quoting carl jung exactly right but i the, the, at least the essence of the message was you know clear 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 that you know erase the blackboard go in with as open mind blank a slate as you can and 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 start with with that because because our job is to see what's not not we want to benefit from the things that we've learned from other other patients other clients and from our own experience but we don't we don't want that to take the lead we, we know the most important thing that i've learned from the best teachers i've had is our is my job as a therapist is to track the client to go where the client's going and understand what they mean and what that does with your, I'm working with somebody like Philip, 
often takes me into a place where I am questioning a lot of assumptions that I'm hearing. For instance, this is an, an experience as an example. I, he's still in pain associated to childhood trauma. If I'm going, first of all, I'm in a conversation. I don't, I don't know this man, so I'm just using a version of him in my head. That, that, that uh, it is, but but it's like, I you know I would I would ask why why is still having a pain associated with tra trauma a sign of failure? What, what, how, how are you coming up short? What, are, what, is it, what is it you expect or what is it you want that you're not getting out of that? It seems pretty natural to have pain associated with, with childhood trauma. Now, you know, there, there, I understand there's a lot of different details on this stuff. That, that we, there may be unresolved things. And there may be things we can work through. But I also think redefining these problems can, can, can do a lot of good. And, and the idea is we... You know, I think most of us have to get to a place where we 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 ask ourselves, what do we think better is? You know, because you know, if we if we think it's just, well, I just speak for my own life. If if better is just being happy and cool, calm and collected, then I'm with Philip. No, 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 nothing's worked. It's like it's like no, I, that's not the way. That's not. Some people who don't know me very well might might characterize me from the outside. <laughs> But those of you guys that know me well, that well, ain't me, you know, and 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 I and I don't see that as an unhealthy thing. I just see that as me, and and so what I want to be able to. So, so some of the time we can help people feel better. We can get to be and feel better when we are taking responsibility. Nobody's coming. I'm going to be responsible for myself. We can get in there and we can and we can we can we can move the bar a little bit. We can say say okay, well maybe that's not the goal. Maybe or or to me, one of the things I work with people a lot is is um, if you tend to think of like um, happiness as the goal. If you think I'm going to be I'm going to be happy more most of the time or something like that. You know, my experience is is that and I mean if you can do that, by the way good and and uh, teach the rest of us how to do it but but the, to me what i've learned is there's better there's better th there's better things that are more measurable and more more pertinent than happiness or just being glad about things being being happy it, and that and they are like like um integrity uh we talk about this stuff all the time in here it's it, it, integ integrity self-respect um meaning purpose you know, and, and so to me, the, the, the big change that, that in terms of how I was pursuing my day to day recovery, which left it in a way that especially be dealing with with ongoing depression as I have in, in my life at, at different times is like that. It, it did. It didn't leave me with a, with a definition of better that had to be without depression. You know, it's like I could be right in the middle of my depression. I could be a little bit better in my depression. I could, I, I could be in remission from my depression. Whatever it happens to be, but it's like the the point is, it's it's getting up every day, being the best version of myself I can, and and being able to feel good about what who I was to, today, and you know, and ready to do better tomorrow. You know, and and specifically define. I, I think I get this from emotional sobriety, but I get also a lot of it from the from reading about stoicism. Is the idea of you know going out in the world every day and being the best version of myself, and the best version being defined as taking good good compassionate care of myself and being of service to other people. You know, I think that's probably a value a value that most of us in this in this group share and. So when I think about Philip or other people like that, if we can get to a place where we have a a, a more clear and more realistic objective, the, the, you know, then then we're going to be able to begin to, to to basically say no to that should monster that tells us you know you're not doing any better. And it, you know, and I get it. I mean, if I've lived, lived in my depression or my shame, and you know, and and I'm getting the message that I'm not doing any better, it's it's, it's kind of hard to argue. You know, it's it's like because I'm not feeling any better at those times. But it's like what I want, what I would want to challenge myself and Philip and other people is to know that that's not that's not that's not the, necessarily the best measure. Uh, you know, and 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 we and going back to the theme, which is we are, uh, you know, nobody's coming because we are responsible for ourselves, uh, and and we that's what that's that's our job to do that and. 
that we can do that and and we can i mean you can make a you can make a major difference in your life i think in a relatively short time by making that commitment to say i'm you know i'm i'm not in control you know i'm not in control of much you know i can't predict the future but i am in charge is, is we, we I, herb and i talked about this uh, last last week is is just finding the language that helps me d- differentiate it being in charge means you know I, I don't i don't control the cards that are dealt me but i but i um um i i can be i can become a better card player i can do i can do better with with this stuff and and be able to be able to make uh, decisions on my, on my own behalf that are gonna that are gonna benefit me and um and then the, I think the last thing I want to say about about the being being responsible for ourselves is it's maybe it's maybe this is a, just a little tangent, but it's like it's something I've seen with um, a lot of clients through the years, and that is p- people who are who, who get really stuck in in the process of of needing not only needing help but needing to get help from outside themselves. And, I'm, and we don't ever need to stop doing that altogether. But but I've known people. I used to work for a with a, a, a week long codependency treatment program years and years and years ago. Uh, and and we we would meet you know four or five times a, a, these groups in all all different groups. But they, we would have these programs four or five times a year. And there were some people who came to every single one of them, you know, and 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 did much much the same work every time they did that. And I and I think we you know as, as professionals we began to be aware that maybe these people were were more more stuck than than making progress by, by, by just doing the same thing over and over again. So I won't. But so uh, and what I was going to say, I what I I've I seen had clients who basically were able to get to a place to acknowledge that they get really scared when they start to get better. They get they get scared, and one of the things they get scared about is they get scared that they're going to lose their if they're in therapy they they don't want to stop they're afraid they're going to have to stop therapy, you know and and it's and, I, and I've discovered that's not an unusual fear, and it's you know so you know the message there that I have for them or anybody who might have that fear is no you you get to you get to come ask for help whatever you want help for this is you know this is uh, uh nobody's going to take something away from you you know because you've gotten you've gotten healthier because you've gotten better you know and 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 if anything if, if it, those of us who lead this who, who who lead this group are any example we can you can we are good demonstrations of don't worry you're not going to get too much better you know, we're good. We're, we're, we, we all, we, we all still dealing with our shit. You're going to always be dealing with that stuff. It's like, it's okay, but, but give yourself the permission to actually change those problem definitions and to get better and, and to keep moving forward, keep getting better and understand that just because, and I want you to know more, more, more than anything, nobody's coming. Doesn't mean we're leaving you alone. Doesn't mean you're alone. It means, you know, it, we're, th- th- this is, this Thursday night is a great example of this. We are a community there, you know, and, and we, we're all, we, we depend on our, 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 our connections and our community and our friends and, and our, and our sponsors and our, and our leaders, all of that stuff. None of that has to change just because we take full responsibility for our own recovery. So, amen. Wow. Hey, Roger. Hey, Tom. All right. Wow, Tom. So good Thank to you. have you back, Tom. So good <laughs> to have you back. What a, what a wonderful, yeah, I see it in the chat room. Simone Marie Elise says, amen, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I was like in the Sunday morning gospel, man. I'm well, I'll look, I'll, I will look, I will, I will, I will look at my notes later and see if I talked about it, any of the things I planned. It'll be fun. It'll it'll it'll, it'll be fun to see. Thank well, you. I'll, I I'll appreciate be, it. I'll be clean up batter tonight. So Roger, you want to kick this off and then Herb and then I'll go. Okay. Um <clears throat> first of all, Tom, it's just as I said last week, it's so wonderful to have you back um Thank you. we we miss so much when you're not here we miss you and all that you bring but also all the great insights and information 
And I am so happy for you that you Thank shed you. your that you shed your feeding tube today, mm -hmm. man. That that is such a big point in in your no, recovery yeah. in your yeah. recovery. So I am it so ha so happy for you, man. Thank I you. know I know you got to work with the swallowing and the salivary glands and all that stuff mm -hmm, still. And, mm -hmm. But no mm -hmm. matter how far you have to go. You're obviously far enough along on your path yep. That, yep. That, that 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 decision was warranted. So that is fantastic, man. Right. I'm very, really happy no. for you. No, no. Really these people, one of the things that these people, you you have probably had the same experience. These people, the, I, I, these people have taken such good care of me. <laughs> it's like I, you know, it's like, and I and I, and I trust them. That no, there's no way they would let me. They let me take a step like this unless unless they they know that I'm ready to do that. So that, that yeah, their their faith in me and their confidence in me really makes a, a big part of the difference too. So thank you for recognizing that. Yeah, welcome back, man. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Um. So, gosh, you, you shared a lot. I, I mean, you started with the importance of, of taking responsibility, and that essentially is what, you know, no one is coming means, mm -hmm. that, that we're in charge. And then you went, and I love this part, too, that, you know, the best way to counteract, quote, resistance, which as Alan and I and you and her keep talking mm -hmm. about, is really mm -hmm. just us being us it's really just expression we don't even have to use the word resistance mm -hmm. for it it's just mm -hmm. something that a way we've learned to to function right mm -hmm. but a, a, an incredibly effective way to be helpful to someone who's stuck in that mode is exactly what you said which is like nobody's forcing you to be here nobody's right. forcing you to do this i'm not i'm not the you know authoritarian father or mother or whoever you had in your life growing up that uh, that led you to develop all this defiance and then you're well, you know, roger what it, what it felt like to me excuse me i'll just interrupt i'm not trying not to do this sure. again but it's like like it what it felt like to me when that happened to me when i did that in my process er, earlier on is is that i was i was throwing the, the i was having i had a rope and i kept throwing the end of the rope <laughs> trying to get somebody to tug a war with me and yeah. and, and 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 the best people just let the rope drop they, yeah. they they just yeah. they looked at it they and they'd look up they didn't leave me but but they weren't going to pick up the damn rope and pull on it <laughs> and, and, and i, I learned I, I learned you cannot fucking p tug a war by yourself yeah yeah it won't work you fall, you fall backwards and that's it <laughs> that's the end of the story i love that example of throwing yeah. the rope out i mean we talk about being hooked by stuff all the time is another mm -hmm. metaphor it's like throwing that throwing that fish mm -hmm. hook out but mm -hmm. instead of somebody putting it in their jaw and grabbing mm -hmm. onto it and going Just to going to battle. It's like yep. exactly. It's like, nope, not gonna get hooked. Not gonna get hooked. Um I just wanted to reinforce a couple of things you said, the importance of practice. When last mm -hmm. week when I mentioned picking one or two things a day where we have a thought mm -hmm. we want to express or we have an action we want to take, but we sense that hesitation inside of us or we sense the hesitation to say what we want to say. But we know it's something that we really do want to say and hopefully something, you know, that's going to be a positive in mm -hmm. our life to just once or twice a day to actually take that action or, or say those words that we feel hesitant to. Yeah. Of course, use our judgment and our perception of the situation and mm -hmm. sense of appropriateness. Mm -hmm. All that factors in. But still, to start pushing, challenging those boundaries behaviorally, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Nathaniel Brandon, in a lot of his sentences, Talks about, you know, if I did 5% better at this this week or this day than I did yesterday or last week. And I like that, but 5% is always, is always a very nebulous figure or 1%. I like to simplify it and just say one, one or two actions a day, right? Mm -hmm. Or three or four or whatever my energy is, is encouraging me to, to do. That more than anything in my life is what's helped me do what your book is about and, and mm -hmm. we talk about all the time mm -hmm. confront my fears and and gradually move through my fears and mm -hmm. i'm i don't do that nearly as often or nearly as well as i wish i did but i do it fairly often yeah. you know so mm -hmm. um the other thing i want to just mention briefly is is balance and and i keep coming back to this idea and what bill said in his letter about the development of real maturity and balance, which is to say humility. And I always come back to this idea. You said it. 
Personal growth is subjective. We are all different. We all have different patterns. So what is growth for one of us is just same old, same old for another one of us, right? If I'm aggressive all the time, then expressing myself aggressively is it's right. no big deal. It's what I do all the time. For another mm-hmm. person, being able to express themselves with a little bit of an energy or a tone in their voice to say no, that's a huge step of progress, right? So to keep this in mind, what's most important is we know our own patterns. We know our own ways of functioning, coping, and coping. I like that. Coping. And coping. So, <laughs> so, and even with regard to no one is coming. If if I've you know developed this like pugnacious attitude in my life, and I, you know, I take a lot of responsibility for my life, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let anybody help me in my <laughs> life, right? Then, then for me softening in that position a little bit first being aware of it and starting to own it but then starting to show some flexibility with it that's growth for another person if i'm entirely dependent on looking for somebody to lead me constantly and save me and rescue me then for me how i i was reading some of nathaniel brandon's work earlier and he mentioned to honor in his book called honoring the self he said To honor the self is to think, to be aware, to send the searchlight of consciousness outward toward the world and inward toward our own being. To be willing to think independently, to live by our own mind, and to have the courage of our own perceptions and judgments. To be willing to know not only what we think, but also what we feel, what we want, need, desire, and suffer over, are frightened by, or angered by and to accept our right to experience such feelings. And he goes on, but that notion of starting to be aware of my own mind and my own consciousness and my own perspective and beginning to express that is a huge piece of realizing that no one is coming and beginning to save myself. Mm-hmm. So I just, I, I loved everything you had mm-hmm. to say about this, man. And welcome back. Right. So, I, and by the way, I love that book, that, that specific book of, 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 of Brandon's. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I keep it. I have it. It's right, it's right by, right by my, my, my bed on my bedside table. Cause I, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 I could just pick it up and open it and read it anywhere at all. It's, it's got great stuff in there. It speaks yeah. to you. Honoring the self is the name of that book by Nathaniel Brandon, Mm -hmm. B-R-A-N-D-E-N. Thank you, Tom. Herb, Mm -hmm. welcome back to you as well (laughs) since last week. Hello, everybody. My name is Herb, and I'm an alcoholic, and it's really good to be here. Thanks, Tom, very much. Uh, I just had a lot of random thoughts uh, as you were sharing your thoughts and experiences, Mm -hmm. and and one is, this shit is really hard. (laughs) It's really hard. Because we've got two conflicting forces going on at the same time. We have a culture that has tremendous pressure on us at all times in a bunch of different ways. And we have our own personal history of conditioning, most of which we're actually not even aware of, that has an awful lot of inner pressure uh, mm-hmm. on us. And and I, as you were talking, that really struck me mm-hmm. as like... Mm-hmm. No wonder most people don't do this and or give it up after a while, because this is hard stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the major things, and you've heard me probably say it more than once, and and that was the introduction to the set-aside attitude. Mm -hmm. This man said to me, Herb, you've got a lot of information, Mm -hmm. but you've got very little transformation. Mm -hmm. I'm 48 years old. I'm five years sober. I've got a reflective background that's a wonderful uh, bio, but I didn't know that I didn't know. Right. And he quoted Einstein, the consciousness that created the problem cannot be the consciousness that solves the problem. So we're really faced with just an awful lot of difficulty is to have the curtains part because we don't even know there are curtains let alone any type of resistance we have for getting some help i hear it all the time oh 
in meetings, especially hardly ever in front of me because people know that I, <laughs> I want to call water and, and you know use it uh, to their detriment. Uh, and mm. that is, um, oh, that's just me. That's just the way I am. And I'm just built that way. That's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, there are certain genetic and organic things, of course, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but a whole bunch of it is just the condition and the habits that we have. And um, you, you make the point about choice. Mm -hmm. Consciousness and Brandon really rams it home in that book that we've spent some time with mm -hmm. consciousness mm -hmm. as its priority and then choice. Mm -hmm. That choice is what gives us our humanity and Sure, we don't have a choice over addiction. And sure, we don't have a choice over unmanageability. And that, that can be unpacked in a, an hour or two. But <laughs> what we really do is we do fundamentally, fundamentally, fundamentally have a choice that looking at the outcome of our actions <laughs> and taking responsibility for them eventually. Because if we don't, we're just puppets. I think Freud said it's something about we're just um, uh, condemned to uh, a, a position where we're we're victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, the big book in Appendix 2 says there, there's a wonderful quote about um, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. And you, you stressed that point about the willing. I think you did. At least that was the conclusion I had as you were talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I wrote this down because you talked about any change, any shift, any change at all. And I wrote this down for me. The, mm -hmm. Any incremental change will eventually change everything. Any incremental change yeah. will eventually change everything. So thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, what a wonderful discussion. This chapter is really, you know, getting unpacked in such a great way. Um, I was just thinking here is that in many ways we could describe emotional sobriety as the psychology of the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> the psychology of the obvious. Mm -hmm. I mean, the obvious is just not so darn obvious, is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when it's pointed out to me, I go, oh, wow, how is it that I didn't see that? But when you're in the forest, you can't see the forest for, through the trees, mm -hmm. right? You don't realize you're in it. And that's, and that is where, where we need each other, right? Is to give each other the feedback. But I love what you said, Tom, is that this idea that no one is coming really has to do with what we do with the information we receive, what we do with the experience we're having. And see, that's very interesting. When I was in graduate school, I did a study on, is there any kind of characteristic that defines alcoholics or addicts, any personality characteristic? There isn't. I mean, you know, alcoholics can be either extroverts or introverts. Mm -hmm. They can have high scales for on the MMPI or they don't have high scales for. I mean, they can be, um, have an internal locus of control. Or they can have an external locus of control, depending on. But the one thing that stood out across the board is that we fail to learn from our experience. Yeah. We fail to learn from our experience. Now pay attention to that because it gets mm -hmm. to the heart of growth, right? Growth is about integration. Integration means that you're taking an experience you have and you are absorbing from that experience what's going to grow you. Well, if we fail to take that information in and grow, what do we do? We arrest our development. And we talk about arrested development all the time. So it's a very interesting thing. This is the psychology of the obvious. Well, I'll say a couple other things that are obvious, but maybe not so obvious. Through this whole transition, as we're exploring these insights, what we're doing is we're moving from what I would call having our center of gravity externally located outside of us. I am dependent on my environment to be okay. I am looking for environmental support. I am looking for you to make me feel good about myself. 
I have what's called other validated self-esteem. My self-esteem depends on how you think about me, not what I think about me, right? And the transition we're making is going from taking that emotional center of gravity and bringing it back to ourselves as it was when we were infants. Mm -hmm. We're now recovering our lost sense of self. Right. When I put my sense of self out there, all of you determine how I feel about myself. And now through this process, as you look at all of these insights, each insight is moving us more and more to what you said so well tonight, Tom, is taking responsibility for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're shifting, right? We're making that shift. You know, Fritz Perls calls it that maturation is the transcendence of environmental support to self-support. Right. to support well how do you support yourself well listen here's another quote of his and i really want people to listen to this fritz said this he says if you take responsibility for what you're doing to yourself so hear that if you take responsibility for what you're doing to yourself how you produce your symptoms how you produce your illness how you produce your existence then you get in touch with yourself. That's when your growth begins. And that's when integration begins. And that's when you start to learn how to support yourself. That's the agency you talk about. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the agency. And that's moving that emotional center of gravity back to ourselves. I'll say the quote one more time. If you take responsibility for what you're doing to yourself, for what you're for how you produce your symptoms, how you produce your illness, how you produce your existence, then you get in touch with yourself. And that's when your growth begins. And that's when integration begins. And that's when you start to mature. And that's when you develop what? Emotional sobriety. And that's yeah. the practice that we're all having. And you well, really and, thought you articulated that very well tonight. And, the, and that requires that consciousness that goes all the way back mm -hmm. to what we talked about with Nathaniel Brandon and goes all the way back to the big book in terms of the awakening mm -hmm. and Bill's, and Bill's <laughs> comments. It's the uh, second insight you talked about, right? First, you got to wake up. Then you develop this consciousness. Mm -hmm. Then you start paying attention to how you're dependent on this environmental support. Then you start to see, right? Then you start to turn it around. You start to realize how you take things personally. You start to let that go. And now we're talking about no one is coming. Now, since next week, I will probably not be coming because it will be the day after my surgery. <laughs> Roger, would you be willing to kick us off on the next chapter? Um, yeah, of course, Al. Of yeah, course. I, I will probably be on some OxyContin. And so if I take the lead next week, I may not make much sense or I may make incredible sense. But could be a lot of fun, though. Well, yeah, I think we, I think we, I think that's what I'm thinking, Herb. <laughs> the next chapter is accepting what is, so it might be actually pretty entertaining. Here we go. <laughs> well, that's not what is next you know, week. Uh, Alan, going back to what you were saying, though, and I just made another couple connections, and that is alcoholics have a failure to learn from their um, uh, pain or suffering, whatever you, it was, the way you said. Mm -hmm. That was the insanity that, uh, is the is the fundamental problem in addiction that obsession that we do not learn mm -hmm. from our from our history yep right I, al i'm sorry i just i just realized chapter eight is on accepting what is and i have so far to go with that still in my <laughs> life that i really i no i'll give it my best shot man but that that's a tough one but anyway of course yeah i'm glad to yeah I thought you were going to say, I'm just on accepting what is, and I refuse to do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, Tom, I do, I do want to just jump in with a, a thought. You, when you're talking about um, what does, you know, what does uh, my definition of progress or health mm -hmm. look yeah. like? You know, I come from a corporate world, so we always talk about, well, what, how are you going to measure success, right? right? Like, that's always, yeah. you know, that's a, we jump into every project, every, you know, every fiscal year with, with those types of questions. And, you know, it, what's came to me tonight was how I've heard people in the program say like, 
well, if you're not happy, joyous, and free, you must be doing something wrong. And and how, yeah, you know, like maybe just being like a little bit freer and a little bit happy, like that might be huge improvement for for uh, yeah. And itself, it's just right? a subjective. It's like you don't know, you don't, you know, you don't know me. You don't know, you don't know what's going on. Inside of me. I mean that that's where we use ourselves as the standard of measure. And it's, it's a, yeah. you know, and basically that's a lack of empathy. It's like, I would not feel that way in that situation, you know? Okay. That's fine. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't put that on me. You know, it's like, you know, but a lot of people just use themselves as a standard of measure. You, you should, you should, you should, if you, I, hell, I did that with my, in my, both my marriages for a while, which was, which was if tell my wife, if you would just think like I tell you to think you will feel better, you know? <laughs> Apparently it didn't work. Does someone need to believe in God to successfully overcome addiction? Well, the way I like to think about what the program does, it connects us to who we really are. And what does that mean? Well, there's this incredible force in you and I, this growth force. It's the force that moved us from crawling to walking. You wanted to take those first steps. And when you fell, and you fell a lot of times, you didn't let your failures stop you. You picked yourself up, you learned from it. And how many times did you fail before you walked? You failed as many times as you needed to. You see that force, I call it a biological imperative, a psychological imperative, a spiritual imperative. It's moving you towards wholeness. It's moving you to be what you can be. Just like in the acorn is all the information it needs to become an oak tree. In you is all the information you need to become you. Become a you that can cope with life and to deal with whatever you need to deal with to be okay. And that's what I'll talk about in my new book, The 12 Essential Insights for Emotional Sobriety. <laughs>